In Botswana now, on the country's elections, uh, we talk about the umbrella for democratic change and has cast aspersions on SADC observer mission led by Zimbabwe Minister of Foreign Affairs, Busiso Moyo. It's alleged that some party agents have been arrested uh, in Botswana. There's a press briefing currently underway. Let's cross there now live. Are you okay here because there's an officer who vouches. Says, no, I was there when they arrived. I had actually taken pictures because I was there now. I had taken pictures of the of the, the declaration form as we were handing it. So we then were commandeered to come to Khaburoni, which we did. They said that we had not submitted a declaration, a general declaration in Khaburoni. It was actually found at the airport in a file there. Our pilots saw that we had submitted. It is found. We are told, no, it was not submitted to the right official. So we will fine you. So we were fined 30,000 pula after some intense engagement. 30,000 pula we paid. For what? For a document that is in their possession that had been handed up, that they denied had been handed up, but is then found in the airport in some file there, not in our possession, and this is what we saw. And so after all these experiences, we then wrote to the IEC and said to the IEC, you are charged with delivering a free and fair election. We are experiencing obstruction in the conduct of our campaign. We are prevented from flying even when there's no reason. We think this is improper and this now engages your responsibilities to deliver a free and fair election. This election is being obstructed. We are being frustrated and thwarted. And so this is not a free and fair election. So it's your, it's your role now. They never even so much as responded. What then happened? We wrote, I wrote to the American Embassy. I wrote to the British High Commission. I wrote to the European Union uh, mission here and raised these issues. The only one of these embassies that responded was the American embassy. And the ambassador invited me. And I had a discussion with him about the complaint that I had raised. And the ambassador informed me that he had also engaged the IEC. And the IEC had said to him, they never responded to me, never said anything to this date. As the Independent Electoral Commission, they never said anything. They say to him, well, when it comes to those matters, really, we don't have any powers. There's nothing we can do. A body charged with delivering a free and fair election, one of the participants is alleged to be obstructing another in this contest. And they say they cannot do anything. So that was the first engagement formally with the IEC. The next was when we learned that there had been some duplicate registrations of voters or multiple registrations. And the IEC says, yes, there were, but we have dealt with them and we have cleaned out those. And we wrote to the IEC and requested them to furnish us with that information. If you have these multiple registrations, you then must give us the, the list of them. Tell us, how many people did you find? Who are they in relation to which constituencies? So that we can also go through the voters' role with a fine comb and establish whether indeed these voters have been removed, if that's what the IEC is saying. As, and indeed, that's what it was saying. So we're saying, give us the lists, give us the names of all these, so that we can then go through the voters' role and check whether as you claim, these names have been removed. The IEC has responded to that request now, and it says, it cannot avail us. It says, in relation to the report indicating multiple registrations, you are advised that we are currently constrained by excessive engagement to produce it as a standalone report. 
However, please note that such information is already included in the election roll issued to you. You could therefore extract it from the roll in your possession. What are we talking about here? So that you understand the folly of this response. We are saying there were multiple registrations in a number of constituencies. Did you do anything? Do you acknowledge first that they were? Yes, we do. Did you do anything about them? Yes, we did. What did you do? No, we removed them. Such are disqualified. That's verbal. Okay. Give us the names. When you disqualify them or you remove them, you obviously keep a, a list. You tabulate. These are the people that we removed, as by law we are entitled to. So that when you prepare the voters' roll, it, it, it excludes these people that you've removed. Because if they still appear, and we are supposed to extract them from the voters' roll, then it means their names still appear in the voters' roll. How else do you explain that we have to now extract those names, find them in the voters' roll, when we are told they've been removed? If they have been removed, it means they are not in the voters' roll. So we want to see who they are so that we can then check the voters' roll and see if indeed these names have been removed. This is a simple, simple exercise. So we were asking a body that is charged with delivering a free and fair election that is supposed to be open and transparent, whose credibility and the credibility of a whole electoral process turns on some information that they acknowledge they have and they refuse. We are in this situation. So we've been refused that information. We are supposed to find it in the raw when that information is not supposed to be in the raw. This is the Independent Electoral Commission. I'm that there you see is a press conference being held by the UDC Botswana's opposition party making various allegations against the Independent Electoral Commission with regards to electoral processes and they've highlighted that it seems to be biased against them and uh, so far they've appealed to various international agencies, the American Embassy is the only one that's been willing to come forward and help this is what the UDC is saying of course that uh, election on the 23rd of October.